Hi, my name is Martin Suttinger from Planet Neon Signs and Artwork in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, and I'm going to show you neon today. Right now I'm going to go over the tools of the trade for neon sign making. Right here is the blow hose. One end gets connected up to the neon tube and the other end gets put in your mouth for putting air pressure into the tube. A cork gets placed in the other end of the tube. So when you blow air into the tube, which I'll show you later while bending, keeps constant pressure on the inside of the tube. You can adjust it so it doesn't collapse on itself. Next is the glass file. It's reused for cutting glass tubes. You just uh, score the tube and snap it lightly. I'll demonstrate that later. Next is the most important, the chalk pencil. It's for making marks on your glass work that will not melt away in the fire. Here's an electrode holder. It's used to hold the electrodes in place so you don't burn your fingers. And by the way, these are electrodes. One end comes with what's called a tubulation to get the gas in and out of the tube while processing. And the other end is sealed off. Then you have corks, which get put into the ends of the tubes. And you have a little measuring device for telling the diameter of the tube, which is really important in the processing of it. Next you have a block, wood block, with some special paper on it that doesn't burn for uh, flattening the glass out. And a, uh, I guess a lead shot sandbag for putting over the glass to hold it in place while you're working on the table brass screen goes directly over your pattern so you can place very hot glass right on top of the paper and it will not burn. It's got a pretty good resistance on it for getting hot glass directly on the screen which we'll demonstrate later. And the pattern will go underneath the screen as you can see here. So you can put the glass directly on top of the pattern to get your exact bend and it will not burn the pattern up. Neon glass comes in many sizes and colors. Clear tubing, coated tubing, and colored glass. This is a, an example of two blues where this glass is physically colored and this is coated with a powder on the inside of the tube. The colors come from neon gas or argon gas. Neon is your typical red color. Argon gas is a light lavender color. When you add mercury to it, it creates an ultraviolet light on the inside of the tube to fluoresce the special powder. This here is a ribbon burner. The flame can be adjusted from two inches up to 24 inches. This here is the crossfire burner. It's used for making sharp bends and welding pieces of glass together. This here is a hand torch used for working on the glass up on the table or sealing on electrodes. The torches are fed with a mixture of natural gas and air. There's valves at the bottom to get the correct fuel-air ratio for the proper flame for bending the glass. This here is what's called a processing manifold. There's neon gas and argon gas. This tube has a special liquid in it. When under vacuum, it will allow you to see how much gas you're backfilling the neon tube with. These numbers are coordinated with the different sizes of glass. So if you're processing various sizes, you need to match up the numbers to get the correct amount of gas into that tube. For this video, I'm going to demonstrate the letter A.
Next we're going to process the piece of tubing. Uh, right now I'm going to check for leaks. Now I'm opening the main valve to suck the air out of the tube. This is a miniature Tesla coil. And you can see the vacuum is drawn to ignite the tube. And what I'm looking for, I'm going across all the welds that it created. Make sure there's no leaks. If there was a leak, there would be a very bright spark into the tube. It's like a little pinhole going directly through it. Next, I'm going to put the little ball of mercury in. This is a one pound jar of mercury. It's fairly heavy. a little tiny ball. I'm going to work a little ball of mercury down to this mercury trap. It's going to sit there for the whole process all the way till the end. Next time I'm going to connect up the bombarding transformer. A little piece of dried paint. It's a special paint that melts at a certain temperature. I'm going to set that there and now I'm going to turn the transformer on. Give it a quick little test. You want to take an initial vacuum on the tube until you have enough to ignite inside of the tube with the bombarding transformer. Now we're going to close the valve. Now we're going to heat it up to 191, no, 375 degrees. We're going to heat it up to 375 degrees. Now the paint just melted. Now I'm going to open up the valve again. All of the bad stuff we just released, all of the oxygen, all of the moisture, all of the dirt, just got burnt up inside the tube and sucked out. Now I'm going to heat it up again to 475 degrees to process the electrodes. There's a special coating on there. Now we're going to let the tube cool back down to room temperature as the vacuum continues to draw on it, which takes about 10 minutes. Once the tube is warm to the touch, it's ready to be filled. I'm going to close the main valve. This is 9mm tubing. I have a chart on the wall that tells me what I need to fill it to, which needs to be 50 millimeters of mercury. This special liquid is used in place of mercury. So I'm going to put neon in here. And watch this drop. It's going to go down to 15 right about here.
Next I'm going to seal the tube off from the manifold. I have a completely sealed tube with a little ball of mercury in there which I'm going to dump in in a little bit. Alright, I brought the new tube over to my table here. I've connected up a standard neon transformer. I'm going to power it up. Neon when it starts up isn't red as you would expect right off the bat. It takes a little time to age in. If you watch over the next few minutes here, it'll slowly richen up to the red color that you'd expect of neon. Very last process to completing a sign if needed before you mount it is to paint the back of the tube out. The process I use is called dip painting. Just connect some homemade clamps up to it. And I'm going to bring it over to a bucket of paint. This would get dipped down into the bucket of paint. Right back up here. It would once the sign has been dip painted, it'll turn out like this. The back of the lettering is blacked out, all of the work, all of the bends, all of the welds. They're hidden in the black paint, and you end up with the lettering only. I'm Martin Sittinger from Planet Neon Signs and Artwork, Two Rivers, Wisconsin, and this is how to make neon.